Hi, my name is Thomas Tinnigi. I'm with the company Final Systeme in Germany. We develop, produce and sell acoustic emission measurement equipment. With this clip, we want to show you our structural health monitoring model for bridges. If you're not familiar with acoustic emission, let me briefly explain what it is. It's the name of a non-destructive testing method. It's also the name of a physical phenomenon whereby transient elastic waves are generated by, for example, plastic deformation, crack propagation, corrosion, erosion, impact or leakage. Transient elastic waves in this context refers to bursts of sound waves. These sound waves are generated when a material undergoes plastic deformation or damage. These sound waves are propagating through the whole volume of a solid. This is a common property that's shared by all solids. Inherent advantages make acoustic emission extremely suitable for monitoring tasks. The most important advantages are inaccessible sites of a structure can be monitored, it's non-invasive and monitoring can be done during regular operation of the structure. This is valid not only for bridge monitoring but for monitoring any kind of structure and even for applications like machine monitoring or process monitoring. Several failure mechanisms may be detected and identified by the use of acoustic emission testing. All of them have the potential to reduce the carrying capacity of the structure and compromise its integrity. The failure mechanism that we want to monitor is the breakage of a tensioned wire in a tendon. The model is made of cast concrete with embedded steel rods. The cross section of the bridge resembles a box girder bridge except for the fact that the box is not hollow. The steel rods represent the tendons for post tensioning. In this model the tendons are not stressed. The model was not meant to be a structural model for bridges but to be a model for sound propagation in a heterogeneous structure similar to that of a bridge. We have two solid faces, the concrete volume and the steel rods. Their physical properties dictate the sound propagation. Failures like cracks can occur in the concrete block or the steel rods. The task is to distinguish these two types of failures and to discriminate it from noise sources. The goal of this bridge model is demonstrating of how this can be done. AE sources that are related to failure are modeled by a Sue-Nielsen source. True enough, a Sunilsen source stimulates the surface directly, while a wire break is a source in the volume. However, eventually the waves emitted by an embedded source will reach and interact with the surface and cause surface waves. After all, the AE sensor is a surface-mounted sensor. Secondly, the process time of a Sunilsen source is related to breakage of the lead, that is, the mechanical failure of the lead. A wire breakage exhibits similar process times. Noise sources, on the other hand, are related to friction and impact. This can be stimulated and simulated easily by, for example, rubbing or scratching the surface or letting something fall onto the surface. An acoustic emission measurement system consists of sensors, a data acquisition system and a PC or laptop for storing and visualizing data. The sensors are brought into contact with the structure in a way that they are firmly attached to it. The monitoring task dictates where sensors are mounted. A sensor converts a surface motion that is caused by sound propagating through the structure into an electrical signal. A preamplifier is used to amplify the sensor signal and make it immune to EMI. The data acquisition system conditions the signal and processes it. By doing so, it extracts specific features from a burst signal that is suitable for describing and characterizing it. The laptop is used for storing and for visualizing the measurement data. It is also the interface for configuring the data acquisition unit. The measurement data can be further processed in the analysis program in order to fulfill specific monitoring tasks. The sensors are attached to the S and N phase of the bridge model. They are adhesively mounted. Their exact location is not important for our task. It turns out, however, that they should not be mounted symmetrically to the axis of the model. 
The sensors are connected to two preamplifiers, which in turn are connected to the data acquisition system. Sensors should be mounted equally good, ensuring equal sensitivity of the measurement channels. In practice, this means that the measured intensity parameters of a reference source should be the same in channel 1 and channel 2. The analysis setup consists of a processing structure that is suitable for identifying specific signals that are related to via failure in this bridge model. All signals are classified into one out of a number of classes. The important class is related to the failure type that needs to be identified, all other classes to possible spurious noise sources. The classification results need to be combined with additional measurement results since the classification process is afflicted with uncertainties. In the first step, noise signals are discriminated from signals of distinctive sources. The analysis further categorizes signals into critical intensity and non-critical intensity, as well as locatable and non-locatable signals. All of the information is combined to a result that is either a possible failure mechanism, such as a wire failure, or unwanted signals coming from spurious noise sources. Finally, the analysis tries to assign the signals to a specific tendon. First, let's simulate some wire breaks. I'm going to use a Sunilson source for doing that. Sunilson sources are standard reference sources for failure mechanisms like breakage and crack propagation. To simulate a wire failure, I'm going to break a pencil lead on the front face of a tendon. What shall be observed is the fact that all signals are assigned to class 1. Class 1 is indicated in the diagram at the lower left corner as a red rectangle. The classification process has been designed in such a way that wire failure signals are assigned to class 1. Signals from any other sources shall be assigned to different classes. Now let's see what happens if we introduce some noise. In real applications, noise is produced by cars. The sources of noise are related to the effects of a spinning tire. Specifically, these are impact of the tire profile when it hits the surface of the bridge deck, friction of the parts of the tire that are in contact with the bridge deck, and finally the high frequency parts of the vibration when the deformed bridge deck relaxes back to its equilibrium state. Impact I'm going to simulate by dropping the pen on the top of the bridge deck. Let's simulate some friction. Friction in our model is simulated by sliding or rubbing something across the surface of the bridge. I'm going to use the pen for this as well. What we see is that signals caused by friction are assigned to different classes than a wire break signal. We can also have some failure mechanisms like cracking of the concrete. Cracks again are simulated by the use of a Sue Nielsen source. But this time I'm going to break the pen on the surface of the concrete.
Again, we see that signals from uh, Sunnison sources on the concrete surface are assigned to a different class than our wire break signals. Even though we have the same simulation mechanism, the signals are assigned to different classes than a wire break. Nevertheless, the current outcome, we can have misclassification in a real application. Therefore, it's important to combine the classification results with other measurement results as well. In a real analysis setup, we are going to sort out any signals that are clearly not related to a failure mechanism under investigation. Accepted signals are potential candidates for indicating a failure. Accepted signals are further divided into low intensity and high intensity signals, and then into locatable and non-locatable events. The analysis in this case is structured in a way that only locatable events of a certain intensity and belonging to the correct class are identified as wire break candidates. The whole setup relies on the fact that two source mechanisms are not activated at the same time, so that overlapping of bursts or masking out of bursts does not occur. With appropriate acquisition settings, this is true for most of the times when we stimulate two sources at what we perceive at the same point of time. The whole analysis setup can be condensed into one simplified page. The simplified setup shows how many signals made the alarm criterion for a wire failure. We also get some statistical information about how much noise has been rejected and how many signals were accepted. This is valuable information for trending. The setup also has got a diagram showing the energy that was detected in sound waves and a diagram which indicates what tendon is affected by a failure. This model can be used to demonstrate that AE sources originating from the tendon can be separated from other AE sources. This is a property that transfers very well to real structures. I'm ending it here. I hope you enjoyed the demonstration and thank you for your attention.